Hello, my friends, and welcome to MSP Unplugged. I'm your host, Rick Smith. This is the place to learn tips, tricks, and strategies to help you run and grow your IT service business. Whether you're a one-person shop or leading a team for the journey, this is the place for you. Let me introduce you to my co-host, a man who really needs no introduction. He's Chicago's own, Prodigy Tech's Paco LeBron. How are you today, sir? Oh, you know what I like to say, Mr. Smith. Better than good, better than most. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The famous saying, yeah. Our guest today <clears throat> is Antoine Jackson. He's from Enitech. He's the president, excuse me, of Enitech out of Raleigh, North Carolina. Antoine, welcome, and how are you today? Hey, I'm doing well, man. Just trying to survive. <laughs> that's well, <the> truth. <laughs> well, welcome. And, and as, as an MSP, I guess that's the boat we're all in right now, right? Absolutely. Well, just try to survive and keep it going. Well, Antoine, welcome to the show, and uh, I know this is your first time here, so tell the audience a little bit about yourself and um, how you got to Enitech. So um, the journey started for me, you know, probably, man, right after college. Um, I went to, I'm an alum of UNC Chapel Hill, um, shout out to my Tar Heels, and um, during my time in undergrad, I had, you know, I had a really good friend that I grew up with who had started an MSP. And I had a, you know, a great opportunity to work for him. So he kind of, you know, introduced me to this managed service industry and really taught me a lot. It was a good mentor, great friend, still a good mentor in front today. Um, during my time with him, you know, I learned a lot of good things. And of course, I learned some things that, you know, I probably wouldn't do in my own business. And because of some of those challenges, uh, fast forward, we, we ran into some pretty heavy cash flow issues at, at that company. So at the time, uh, my lovely wife, Jessica, mother of both my children, she was my girlfriend at the time. She said, look, Antoine, if I'm gonna have to support you on my nursing salary, you need to be chasing your own dream. Um, I went four months without a paycheck and that kind of really kicked off the birth of Inatech. Um, you know, one of the things that I always kind of try to do is, you know, I try to be very ethical when I do things. So, you know, we did not take any clients, you know, of my previous employer. We wanted to keep that relationship strong and i think that was part of the you know foundation of some of the core values we exhibit today um i've been really lucky because you know the first year i you know you're off on your own and you're scared and you don't know really what's going on so i really went to i went to conferences the first year because it was a great opportunity to network it was a great opportunity to meet some really remarkable people but it was also a great opportunity for us to share different war stories of different people's journey and I think that has been one of the most, you know, best takeaways I can tell people is that it's not just about going to the conference and going to the sessions, it's about the community. It's about meeting the Paco LeBrons out there, right? And then all the other people that are in the space because this is one true community that's always willing to help people, so. it's awesome. So, yeah, sounds great. Now, let me ask you, how long has, um, has, has you, how long ago you started in the tech? Industry? So we, uh, on paper, December, 2012 but in real life we got our first customer January of 2013 okay yeah so it's a long journey but uh, that's good though I mean and um now how, how, how has that you know we talk about you you decided and I think it's great that you, you have someone that believed in you and said hey if we're gonna do this you're gonna be gonna be your own dream is something you believe in how, how was that journey how was that uh that path yeah oh my forward? gosh so you know when you start off and you're by yourself right it, it's lonely man let me let me tell you so you're wearing all these hats you're doing all these things you're trying to do whatever it takes to gain new logo clients sometimes that means you know doing some bad deals and not getting it at the right seat price or however you price your you know services but i will say i was very lucky to have such a supportive spouse um, you know, Jessica, let me tell you, man, like she'd come on the road with me. She'd listen to me talk about something she had no interest in and ever <laughs> understanding. She was like my therapist. Right. So it, it's really good to have a good support partner. Right. I also will say that, you know, as we started to grow, you know, we, we got lucky with just some really good people. My, my chief operating officer, Chris White, great guy. And to be honest with you, we didn't have any money to pay him. And he came and worked for us for 500 bucks a month, dipping into his own savings. And wow. he's still with me today. Nice. So, you know, I, th I think every great successful company starts with the people. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the people that you're with. That's the people that you employ. And honestly, it's the people that you do business with. Those yeah. people that give you opportunities to succeed. Yeah, I, I'm sure that a lot of people in the audience here can relate to your story about just having to bootstrap it and and, and just make it happen, you know, making something from nothing and, and growing in it and running into good people that, that are willing to support you and, and do right. Paco, I know, you know, 
we talk about our stories all the time and we, mm. we've you know we've come a long way and we're you know we're still trying to get where we want to be but you know i'm sure you can you can relate to that and and, and have some good some good in thought, good insight on that no yeah i mean i think uh you know i've been very open on, on our journey for our own business similar to that you know on on paper we started in uh 2013 but really we have been starting this thing called Prodigy Tech since 2011, floating around trying to figure it out, right? And so um, even down to the point where um, that was a part-time business, it didn't really go full-time until 2017, um, or end of 2016 to 2017. And so being able to go on my own full-time, trying to figure that out, um, and living quite cushingly with the severance and all that stuff, and so when the money dried out, um, that was really when it was time to like put up or shut up. And so, you know, if it wasn't for Vanessa being able there to be supportive um, and we had just started dating at that time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for her to still stick through that um, and I'm talking about, you know, hiding the car from being repossessed, you know, uh, having a bad loan, having the sheriff serve me the summons for the lawsuit, um, you know, and I just remember um Hearing the doorbell, I look at the camera. I was like, "Oh, it's the law. I'm not going ahead." <laughs> and she's like, "What do you mean, the law?" So I was like, and so, like, if there was any reason, I mean, she had multiple reasons, but if that wasn't the reason for her to just say, "You know what, dude, I'm out," um, it wasn't. And so, you know, seven years later, and you know, coming up to October when uh, I can get to uh, tell her that she'll be my wife, and then that's uh, it'll be a good time. So yeah, so it's definitely in uh, an interesting journey. Uh, one that there are those that sometimes have to go through that to understand the test of who they are as a character um, and build on that as a person. So definitely hits home. Definitely yeah. hear uh, hear you on that. And so, but yeah, it just it's a matter of how persistent you are um, towards your goal and having that great support system. I mean, you know, and it comes down to that whole idea of you know being resilient, right? Mm -hmm. So you know fun story uh 30 minutes ago before you know i got an yeah, opportunity to be a part of this my email got compromised yes i'm an msp mm -hmm. and i sent out a phishing email to 900 people some of the people my friends in the channel and luckily we have good tools in place you know the moment was small but it felt big yeah. and it was stressful but you know the coolest thing was i had 200 people call me immediately saying, hey, you're a big you know, and that's like, I know, I'm on it. I've already, I've already, I got the first email, I know, because I sent it to my personal. But you know, it's really cool because it goes to show that it's, it really is a community, it's a village. Yeah. And you know, when you're out there, whether you're a one man show or you're further on your journey, relationships is everything. Yep. And you know, this is such an emotional driven business that you always, you always want to be a professional, whether it's good or bad. You know, we've had good clients, we've lost good clients. You know, it's, that's part of the journey. And one of the things I always tell my, my team is, whether you're onboarding or you're offboarding, always be a professional and always treat that person with the same kindness you are when you're trying to, you know, court them. Yeah. And always leave the car better than what you found it, you know? Yeah, exactly, exactly. And I, I know we all, we all talk about, and this is, you know, why this show exists is the community. And it's always good to, you know, to know that there are people out there who have your back, who will give you, you know, genuine feedback, genuine help. And, you know, just offer the help with, with no strings attached, just wanting to see you succeed. And that is, you know, that is the purpose of what we what we do here and, you know, and meeting MSPs and getting their story out just so that everyone knows, you know, it, it really it, it, I think it's very important that everyone knows that everyone's story is not this glorious. Hey, I decided one day to be an MSP and then tomorrow I'm a millionaire, you know, like I'm doing, right. you know, I got a 20 employees and I'm doing a million dollars in RMM because, you know, the, the struggle is real. And, you know, one of the things I learned coming into this community that you, you know, you never really think about is that you're not alone, right? You, you finally learn that there are people who are going through the same exact thing I'm going through, if not worse, right? If not, if their, their experience and I, you know, better or worse may be the wrong term, but their experiences may be different, but they're, they're you know, they're very serious, you know, and, and they, they test your metal. And it's like you said, you got to have that resilience to just keep pushing because if you don't, you know, it will beat you down. For sure, absolutely. <laughs> it will beat you down. And uh, so, you know, with that in mind, I want to stop talking necessarily about the, the negatives and stuff or, or the, the struggles, even though that's part of it. But let's talk about some of the, you know, some of the successes you have and some of the I guess lessons learned that you can pass on to the community about, you know, 
things that you've tried that have worked out for you? Yeah, for sure. So, you know, I think for us, you know, it's it's funny because, you know, everybody's journey is different. Um, one of the things that I had to overcome as a person, because, you know, I try to be charismatic, you know, and I try to be likable. I mean, I, I was, and I'm always going to plug this in. I was prom king, you know, give it, <laughs> believe it or not. So, But no, um, I think quite honestly, you know, one of the things that I had to learn was that not everybody, even though they'll, everybody will want to be my friend, not everybody's a good fit to be a client. Yeah. And the moment you achieve that is another level of growth. It's, it's a level of growth that I'm going through today. It took me 13 years to get there, right? Or to, a little over 10 years, I guess, to get there. And it's interesting because, you know, for us, we, when we first start out, we're, we're just, we just care about getting money in the door yeah. and you know whether it but we don't care like if it's a clean dollar is it a profitable dollar as long as it can cover my overhead we're okay right <laughs> a dollar's right. A dollar. right it's a dollar right <laughs> but then what you eventually learn and realize is you know the effort that you may have to put into achieving that the juice may not be worth the squeeze you know we we lost a uh, pretty substantial client that it really took a toll on me like to the point where my wife was like, do you need to go like talk to somebody? Because this is like wearing you down. It's not even that much revenue. But for me, you know, I treat every loss as, you know, a, a poor reflection of myself, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that one of the things that a lot of MSPs in our, you know, industry do, they kind of take two paths, right? The ones like me who will kind of beat themselves up and try to figure out what did they do wrong. And then you have the other ones who will kind of almost not even look at themselves introspectively and say, oh no, it wasn't me, it's them, right? No. And I think that one of the things that we have to kind of learn how to do is be more introspective when you lose someone and then go back and maybe think about, okay, how could that relationship have been different? Not what could I have done to prevent it, but how could it have been different? Mm -hmm. Should I have charged more, right? Should I have actually had a better system in place for this? And I think if you're always challenging yourself to be better, well, the growth kind of rises with that right yeah. and the other thing i would say too is like you know people in this space they're not your competitors they're your peers yeah. the guy in your same market who's selling those same service he's your peer and you have to the moment you view that you unlock so many doors because you're able to be stronger together yeah i mean it's funny you say that because i was just having a conversation with someone um at the uh super ops booth actually downstairs um and when we were talking, we were sharing on why we switched from our previous platform, et cetera, et cetera. And so later on, uh, come to find out that they're in the they're in Chicago as well. That had, you know, quinky thing. So we're like, hey, let's grab lunch and we'll figure it out. So I told this to someone else, uh, a close friend of ours, and he was like, damn, I'm sorry, I didn't realize you had uh, gave uh, the inside secrets to your uh, to competition. I was like, doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think Rob Ray said it best on the stage uh, earlier today is that. You can provide anyone the playbook, but the question is that can they execute on it? Correct. Right? And that's the huge piece of that. And I learned that way back when, um, probably several years ago, just understanding that the amount of effort it takes for someone to just do something in general, let alone put a strategy behind it and be and executing it to a particular plan, is very far in between. And if they do, then the second piece of advice of that is that you should always be trying to run yourself out of business. Mm -hmm. yep. And you should, and because the moment that you give that playbook, that playbook is going to get figured out some way or another, either through osmosis or through some other means, you should always be trying to put yourself out of business. And what I mean by that is, are you on to the next stage? Are you figuring out what's next for your business? Even if, and I'm not talking about like, the macros of the long 10 year plans, the three to five years plans, but what are you doing in the interim of the one to three? Once you've established your baseline, once you've gotten to good, how do you get to that continuous pace so that you don't stay stagnant and you don't just settle for what you have right now? So definitely, uh, uh, you know, words and, I, and I think some of that challenging also has to come from within and within your team. You know, luckily, you know, Chris is very driven on my team and he challenges me every day to be better. And it, you know, it's, and, and, and if, you know, I always kind of say, you know, to people like, look, if you're not pushing yourself or pushing each other, or if we can't disagree on something, then something's wrong, you know? Right. So. No, right. I agree. Now, <laughs> as far as for your team, um, what size is your business right now? So we are a sub 3 million MSP. Um, we have 15 employees. Okay. Um, we are, I mean, I almost cursed on this thing. Sorry, one fly here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but we, we, sometimes I feel like we're still very scrappy. You know, we're still kind of in that scrappy mentality. And now we're trying to, you know, ascend to this more polished, more strategic, you know, mentality. Sure. Um, and I think that that's one of the biggest parts of like the growth process. You get to, like, you know, you can, I feel like when we first got to a million in revenue, it was like a knife fight. I felt mm. like, you know, 
it was literally like every day I'm, I'm coming to war and I'm going here, you know, and I, and I remember like that journey because for me, I'm very goal driven. Mm -hmm. So on my dashboard, I had a, one million written on my mirror in the bathroom. My wife thought it was so weird. She's like, why is there, why do you keep writing one million? And I'm like, well, that's a goal. That's a target. And achieving is believing. Right. Yeah. And then once you achieve it, well, you can't stop there, right? right you got to set the next goal, right? right? Yeah. Yep. But I felt like going from one million to two million was a lot easier because I had overcome that, you know, that 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 eight hundred pound gorilla, right? That a lot right. of MSPs never get a chance to achieve. Right. And to be honest, I mean, the way we got there was, you know, hard work and some luck, right? We got we got some really good opportunities. You know, we we did a we did a really good job with marketing. We had some pretty good marketing partners along the way, okay. and um, you know, and that was really what kind of got us there. So That's awesome. Yeah, and is is this is it's what both of you have said is this hits home. It's like the stagnation part, right? You don't want to stay stagnant no matter where you are. So when you get, you know, some people have that goal. I want to get to this revenue amount, and then there's no forward thinking past that. So I've hit that number, or I've got this many clients, or I've gotten this, and so now my goal is completed. And it's always that, you know, part of this job. And part of being an entrepreneur, all of us started these businesses, yes, we wanted to make money, we wanted to be successful, we wanted to do something, you know, for ourselves and better ourselves, better our families. But it's also that competitive spirit in you, right? You, you set out on that, that venture, you want to, you know, you want to grow, you want to accomplish something, right? And, and it's not to say it's never enough, but the fact is you should always be pushing yourself, right? Always trying 100%. to reach the next plateau. And as long as you're, you know, doing it the right way, you know, you know, being a, being a, doing business the right way, treating people the right way, you always want to keep pushing forward. And I, I just think that's something that we all should just, you know, keep in mind as we, as we grow. Now, I, I've been in doing this, you know, technically for 20 years on, like as we, we've made this on paper, off paper, things right. are on paper, <laughs> you know, so technically 20 years, but not really doing it as long. But, you know, I still, I've, I've come to this point now where, I know where I'm, where I want to go. I'm more determined than ever to get there. So I've really finally made some of the changes to, uh, to make those things happen. And, and it's just good. And it happens again. I'm going to go back to community. It goes back to having conversations with this guy, like every day, meeting people like you who, 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 who have done it and who are, you know, have stayed resilient and, and, and set the example, set the, set the, the, the goals, set the, you know, the terms. So, uh, this is not part of the script, but thanks guys. You know, <laughs> <laughs> no, sure, I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who, 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 who watch us, who listen to us, who are trying to figure out, okay, how do I move to the next level and what is the next level? And a lot of times I think it's important that they just hear the stories that there are people who, who started where we are or started where they, you started where they are and have gotten where, you know, you know, it's so, level. it's so funny. You're like, you say that. Cause I, I always feel like we all have like the same common problems. I, yeah. <laughs> the you know, like, right, like, you're on the same trail. Man, about I'm always like, Oh man, I cannot believe we are dealing with this and mm -hmm. we got to fix this. And then I'll go talk and you know, and I'm part of a lot of peer groups and I talk to my peers and they're like, Oh yeah, bro, we're going through the same shit. Yeah. All right. That was my one free curse word. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> it's okay. It's like, no, and it's funny you say that because exactly like that, like I was talking to, so there's a, a, a another MSP that we partner with on some subcontract work and things of that nature. And I was talking to their operations person and they were saying like, yeah, you know, uh, the owner always says that you, uh, we're two years behind you. And I was like, Bullshit. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, there's no, like, like if you only knew behind the hood, right. which we try to be as transparent as possible, but like you said, we all have the same problems, no matter where and that size, like, we're all trying to figure it out. Right. Right. Like, and that's the, and that's the kind of like the, the, the wizard behind the curtain that I've learned when, you know, as we're coming up and getting involved in the space, you're like, man, that dude's on stage. Like, oh, man, this yeah. guy's talking. Like, he must have got his shit together. He's, he's good like, to he go. He struggled with the same stuff you are. Right. And, yep. and, you know, it's so funny. So one of the things I did learn early that I think really helped me was perception is reality, right? Yep. So if you don't think big, you'll never be big, right? right. So when you're a one-man show, you have to act like a hundred-person entity, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And um, one of the things that I really put as part of our forefront was heavy marketing, right? Yeah. Heavy brand awareness. Because at the end of the day, that's what's going to help you really start to grow and get new logo clients. Yeah. So strategic partnerships. But it's not even just that. I think, honestly, applying for awards, being parts of podcasts like these, like those things are very, they're, they're crucial to your brand and your brand awareness. And I think if you're a one-man show just starting out, 
you got to build the brand, right? Yes. You have, and you kind of have to do that along the way of solving problems and getting new logo clients. And also, I believe that at some point in your journey, you also have to learn how to get new logo clients that's not just referral base. Yeah. And I think the MSPs that are doing that, those are the ones that are achieving and really having a lot of success. Yeah, you know, and there's one thing I picked up that you were saying, and you kept on with as far as like brand awareness and really hyping yourself up for logo clients. Can you share a little bit about what you mean by logo clients and who you're trying to attract as a prospect into a, being a client of yours? Yeah, sure. So, you know, um, well, one, like with new logo clients, right, those are clients that are new brands or new companies that are working with you. You know, we, we are, we're very lucky to have a lot of um, major brand clients. Like we have a biscuit, a biscuit Donut franchise, right? They're national. We have this healthcare group out of Boston. They have like, you know, 70 clinics. And then we work with a uh, clothing retailer that um, makes um, some pretty cool stuff. They are very eco-friendly, very eco-conscious. I'm not allowed to say their name because, sure. you know, but yeah. nonetheless, they, they they are a very cool brand to work for. They're very forward thinking, very, they, they care about their people. They care about their, you know, the environment. They care about, they have a lot of good core values. Right, right. So, you know, the way that we've been able to align and partner with clients like that really started with us focusing on getting our name in a tech out there, but also if someone Googles you, right, showing the other things that you're doing that's making a positive impact in the channel and out of the channel. Even, um, you know, us being endorsed by the North Carolina Dental Society, right? Um, and we all know how dental IT can be. I'm not even gonna, that's, a, that's, that's another podcast for another day. But nonetheless, you know, it's really about emerging yourself and thinking big, right? Putting yourself out there. Now, we're not running Super Bowl ads yet. You know, we ain't got no budget like that. But, um, you know, we're, we're doing the small things that do matter and help. Mm -hmm. Like, and I think that it's just important, you know, and I think it's probably one of those things we skip or we don't think about. It goes back to what you said. we so focused on the next dollar, whether it's a good dollar or a bad dollar. Yep. And, um, you know, we don't necessarily focus on how, like, first of all, getting our name out there. But then there's the next question is, how do we do that? Right. And we, we run into sometimes the I want to say the I'm going to call it the confidence issue of, you know, who's going to. Even, no matter how much marketing we do, nobody recognizes who we are. But the fact of the matter is, marketing, as is, is we know, is the, only, is the only reason we know the, the logos or the brands now, right? Somebody's out there marketing. And if we are smart enough and figure out, and there's a lot of resources for us to go out and be able to market our businesses to where we want to be. Man, you're, you're, you're hitting home on this. <laughs> like, like, I mean, it's it's there's so much more resources today than there were 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. I mean, partners like Pax8, right? Mm -hmm. I mean any of the major players out there have some type of marketing or co-branding opportunity, right? And I think a lot of us are, are as only as strong as, you know, we, we look at the vendors right space as the next tool that can kind of get us the next tech, but we never think about them as a resource that can help grow the brand because they are willing to co-brand co right. with you, right? And we never really take advantage of that. So you're, you're man, you're spot yeah, on. Yeah, I mean, on there that. are plenty of resources for us out there that we, we <laughs> have to learn and you know, and use and, you know, and it, it just helps us because it's really, you know, have your name out there. And, but something else you touched on that I think is very important and you, that I don't think we do enough of is we don't. And I don't want to use the word brag, but we don't talk about ourselves in things outside of tech, right? Outside of the space we do, because there are, like you said, there are companies out there or people out there who want to do business with people you know, who they they align with, right? And yep. sometimes that may not necessarily even be the fact that, you know, there's, you're a great tech company, there's five of us on the corner, right? You know, you take a block, there's, but there's something else that drives them to say, hey, I want to do business with that guy or Correct. that company. Correct, and I think also, you know, you can't use, uh, you can't use the tools as a crutch, right? Because unfortunately, and, and maybe fortunately too, because it's helping us become more competitive, I feel like that, the tools at the end of the day are, are almost irrelevant, right? Yeah. EDR, you name the tool, right? Even AI is gonna eventually kind of get there. Right. We're all playing with the same tool kit, right. right? So I think the key differentiator for a lot of us has to be, like you said, the extracurriculars outside of just the normal MSP space. Having empathy, right, as an MSP. Mm -hmm. Being relatable, connectable, because that is the true thing that makes everybody different. You know. These companies that are disrupting the space, 
the reason why they're big disruptors is because they've tuned into the end user customer experience, right? Yeah. And I think that the MSPs that think that way and drive that way, they'll find customers that'll connect with them, right? That, that are the right alignment and the right fit. So. And that's a very big point to say, right? Is like, I think we get into a point as running our business where we're trying to get all the clients or we're yep. trying to figure out that, um, who can we attract as clients. And, you know, we always hear lead with your authentic self and you will attract those that are going to want to do business with you. And there are a lot of people that are afraid to do that. They, you know, especially, you know, I'll even throw for our, us, us three here is that sometimes there are colleagues will sometimes have to code switch. And, yeah. try, and like because they feel like they have to adhere to a certain stigma or their society and trying to acquire business and by not leading with your authentic self you put a lot of pressure on yourself right and, oh yeah and, and it's and it's such a, a internal battle that you have to deal with it's something i had to deal with very early on um and not even just code switching but trying to pose as this uh, big company right and i ha and didn't have the structure in place like i didn't have the answering service i didn't have the processes i was trying to act big when i wasn't big right and you know and and not really dialing it in and understanding that there are ways to do this so you can operate like the big brands yeah right. absolutely and, and and really investing in that um i think there's a lot of times where there's just not a lot of thought process or not a lot of investment in your internal ip and your internal self as well absolutely i mean even like you know going to events yeah. training right you know it's funny um you know i uh, some of my peers give me a hard time they're like dude why do you why do you why what's the roi on going to a conference and i'm like the roi is education right the mm -hmm. roi is connection the roi is finding a partner in a different market so i can support a client later right yeah. and but you know it all goes back to like the value of a relationship so for me yeah any relationship, even if I'm talking to a prospect that is not the right fit, yep. I still make the connection because maybe maybe they know someone that is the right fit, right? right? And I think that that's the problem that a lot of us have is we, we, we look, we focus too much what's in front of us and not beyond that. Yep. And you know, we, we don't look at the forest, right, per se, and right. We, we just kind of focus on, okay, well, what, what can you do for me now versus what can you do for me later? You know, fun story was, you know, we had went on this cold call with a company, and this was in 2019, we made it to like the final round, they didn't go with us. I still sent the follow-up email saying, hey, thank you for the opportunity, It was this was great. Fast forward five years later, they're now about to become a client. Nice. So every relationship, every opportunity may not cash in today, but it, it'll cash in down the line if you really, not just nurture it, but if you're just authentic about it, right? Right, right. So, and, and the key piece of that was you probably uh, um, maintain some type of connection. Absolutely. With the, whether that's in social media, whether that's a newsletter, you know, I think that's a big opportunity for those that, because we literally had the same similar situation. So back in 2018, there was this big electric company that I for sure thought it was a shoe in We had a great conversation. We pitched. We were talking back and forth. An agreement got out. I, I mean, I thought it was in the bag and they didn't go with us. And so I said, you know what? Totally understand, um, but would love to stay connected. So we were, uh, the CEO was connected with us in LinkedIn. And over the next five years, because that was a contract they signed, um, we went back and forth, back and forth. Uh, we posted the content, our case studies, uh, a lot of that. And then five years later, when the contract was up, they reached back out to us back last year. And so we had a, a great conversation. We went back and forth. And then now they did become a client for that same reason, because you know, it's always important to maintain the relationship. I think there's a lot of viewpoints with some um, MSPs or entrepreneurs where if they can't get all they can from that one client at that moment, then they kind of move on. Yep. And that's not really the game that you have to really play. You really have to be in it for the long haul. How do you make sure that they are not just a client, but they're going to be a long-term partner and you as their advisor so they can trust you and maintain those growth relationships and things of that nature. But that's my tip for you is uh, for those listening is that if you do happen to get a prospect that says no, um, see if they're willing to stay in connection, whether that's a newsletter, stay informed, connect online, see if they like your uh, LinkedIn page to maintain some type of relevant conversations going moving forward. Yep. It all goes back to two things, I think. One is not letting what you perceive as a loss today really you know define a loss tomorrow right take it that loss today can be an opportunity for tomorrow absolutely so take advantage of that and secondly it goes back to the, the big thing i'm learning too is process right there should be a process in place when you lose a when you lose an opportunity or, or an opportunity doesn't work out for you immediately that there is that that realm of communication that continues to go right whether that is again 
having a LinkedIn com- connection with them and, and, you know, talking or a phone conversation or sending them newsletters or whatever it may be, that should be part of the process, right? Because again, a lost opportunity today does not necessarily mean a lost opportunity forever. And you never know. Like they're, they're, those are two good examples of just staying in the game, right? Staying consistent, saying, hey, you know, I'm still here, staying relevant. You know, again, because people say all the time too, and uh, you know, and I've seen this happen, and this has happened with me. Even when you go to someone and you're, they think you're too expensive or whatever. If you stay in their realm, when there's a problem, they call you, right? Yeah. They call you because your name is your name or your company or that guy who 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 sends me a newsletter every month. Let's call that guy. They might yep. not even know who the hell my name is, but let's call right. that guy who's, who sends us the newsletter every month to see if he could fix this. And then you know, so opportunities are always there. And, you know, I've, I've been big in 2024 on process, right? So we, I'm writing a process for everything. So basically a lost opportunity at the time, there's a process to continue to follow up. And, uh, you know, and that, that, that's just, you know, well, something to keep in mind. And, you know, and, and, and going on to just the whole concept of how process is a big deal for you in 2024, we're following kind of that same thought process, right? So at some point, yes, as a one-man show, you're involved in every aspect of the business. But eventually you will hit a certain economy of scale where you cannot be involved in the right. day-to-day. And one of the biggest regrets I have is not building the process along the journey. Mm. You know, when I was the guy that was responsible for help doing Tier 1 Help Desk, well, there's some things that I probably could have built some processes for that would keep me not involved in certain aspects right. of the business. And you know, and, and I think that the bigger picture that goes beyond that is your business is worthless if you have to if if you are the glue that keeps it together, right? right? Yep. So the process thing is so real. It's something that everybody should be working on. And just start a little bit at a time. You're not going to turn the tide tomorrow. But if you can start with that one thing that seems to be a repetitive thing that someone else can delegate or can take, do start with that. You know, that's one of the biggest pitfalls we fall into as we grow. We still think of ourselves internally as the one-man show, no matter how many employees right, we have. Exactly. And we end up finding ourselves kind of lost in the, in the weeds, mm-hmm. right? And, yeah. and it'll open up so many more doors, especially when you have process. No, I totally agree. Um, Antoine, we'll uh, let, make this the last question as you round out the episode. So you mentioned process. Um, is that, or if process is not your current focus, what is your current focus right now for the business in 2024 as far as where you're investing some resources, time, energy sure. to either improve or grow, at least for the remaining half of 2024? So, yes, yeah, good question. So process is one, right? How does Antoine continue to remove himself and not be Antoine, but be in attack. That's yeah. one, right? Yep. Building process. And then the most other important thing is net profitability. So mm-hmm. when I've started and when we we got to a certain point of comfort, all we cared about was making sure we took care of our employees, making sure I made a decent living and making sure all our bills were paid. Yeah. And then anything else didn't matter. Sure. Net profitability has been our biggest focus. And you know, that's from right sizing a client who probably needs to invest more in their tech stack, right? That could also be renegotiating vendor contracts, right? Or looking for overlap. Mm. And I think those core things will move the business forward because it immediately equates value. Um, One thing I'll leave with is kind of this, right? So a lot of times, yes, new sales solves a lot of problems, but getting new sales is tough, right? You You gotta build that machine and that engine. A lot of us could probably increase our net profitability today if we raised prices, Mm -hmm. re-evaluated those contracts, or even just tidying up some of the inefficiencies we have when we have things on auto pay and auto bill. So. No, those are all great words. I appreciate it. That is a great opportunity for you to just reevaluate what you currently have, kind of part of what we talk about in our fourth quarter living series that we have at the end of the year, Um, but definitely something to set out as those tasks, those milestones, the ability of being able to focus on having those goals that you prepared from the previous year into the middle of the year and then readjusting and reassessing as you go along. I definitely think those are great words to hand by. So um, as far as for my signing off words, I think that the ability to understand yourself is a big key on that. Don't follow 
uh, what you think the market is asking you to do. F follow what you feel is good in your own resources, your own effort to be able to do so. 1% better today is a be percent better than yesterday. And really focusing on that ability of only doing what you can with what you have. Don't overextend yourself. And then, as you mentioned, with a lot of care, with a lot of investment with the community and a little bit of luck, it's amazing because this is a phrase that says the more prepared you are, the more lucky you get, right? Mm -hmm. right? So being able to do a lot of that up front will pay off extremely much more as you move forward so that's what i will uh, leave off with today's episode okay well guys i antoine first i want to thank you for taking the time hey, I, uh, I, I, I know it's been a busy week you know busy couple of days here excuse me at at uh pax a beyond but uh, i do appreciate you taking the time to, to spend with us and sharing your knowledge yeah. and sharing your story with us and we do look forward to having you back absolutely <laughs> i'll pull up anytime okay <laughs> um uh, let me let me do this though before we sign off for you for you if, uh, you know, I, you, I think you have a compelling story and a compelling, you know, growth that you're going through. So if anyone wanted to get in touch with you, just pick your brain or maybe, you know, learn a little bit more about you. Well, how would they do that? Yeah, so um, you can go to inatechsolutions.com. Um, you can reach out through that. Or, honestly, LinkedIn, Antwine, A-N-T-W-I-N-E. There ain't a lot of me. So Antwine Jackson. And I'll always, I'm, I love talking about this stuff. This, this is what I live and die for. It's, it's awesome. So feel free to reach out to me anytime. Absolutely. Just don't send me a phishing email. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Before we slide off, folks, we just got to do a quick reminder of our, our uh, gathering that's coming up, and that's TechCon Unplugged. That's September 17th, excuse me, September 12th to the 14th at the Hotel Arundel in the what, greater Washington, D.C. area. Now, TechCon Unplugged is our annual gathering with IT business owners. There you'll join like-minded guys for a weekend pack with resources to help your IT business thrive and grow. Tickets, your ticket will include 25 educational sessions, two networking events and after hours entertainment, all expo hall meals, refreshments and happy hours, automatic interest into the generous show giveaways. And most importantly, it's the conversations you'll have in the hall. Like, you know, the people you'll meet, the experiences you'll have, as Paco and I like to say, it's oh, where the magic happens, <laughs> right? And, you know, it's just that, you know, again, I, I emphasis, the emphasis this all the time. The people you meet and the relationships you build are what really helps your business grow because the, those are the resources that you end up calling on as time goes and you need help or you just, you know, need some encouragement. So I um, implore you all, if you're interested, get your tickets at TechConUnplugged.com. Excuse me. Now, for us, we invite you to tune in every Tuesday and Thursday. You can watch the video podcast on YouTube.com forward slash MSP Unplugged. Do us a favor, like, subscribe, hit that notification button to be notified whenever a new episode is available. If you think we have a face for radio or you just rather take us on the go, we're on your favorite podcatcher apps. We're on Amazon Music, Spotify, and Apple Music, just to name a few. Okay. For Antoine, Paco, and I, I'd like to thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time on MSP Unplugged. <laughs>